some of it doesn't even always show up on the field in this in the stat sheet just what he meant to that room and um, helping change our culture and bringing a mentality to teams how much did the first play Sunday's gameplay roll it at zero Liverpool? nothing now what's the luxury of bringing someone in like Patrick that obviously has the knowledge of the system to, to shadow with Dylan now yeah, well, you just said it, right? It's, it's just his familiarity with what we're trying to get done. He knows the, the intricate details of uh, not only why we're trying to get, get it or do what we're doing, but how to do it. Um, and then he adds a lot of value on, on teams as well. So he's a guy that we can rely on in any situation, uh, in the run game, in the pass game. Certainly, he does a great job of protection as well. So, uh, and I think the guys were, were jacked up to see him. How much uh, silent count stuff do you still do, and how do you think you fared with it in Atlanta and Las Vegas? I mean, we, we still work it. It's just, it's, it's hard to get the, the real speed of it. Um, you know, it's something that we do all the time, and uh, it wasn't, we also used it, obviously, in Denver. Every road game you use it, so... Um, yeah, it is, it's an added challenge, I would say, when you're not getting those, those reps uh, full speed. But that is what it is. And they had to go through the same thing when they played here. You know, when a score is 27-3 at halftime, it's, it's not going to be a good day for you. How much have you been showing the second half film to your guys? I know it was a different game at that point, but you guys outscored them 17-7 in the second half. Do you emphasize that to them, like this is what you did? No, not necessarily. I, I mean, like, that's all part of it. You, you're always doing film study, but, um, you know, it's, it's just more about staying in the moment. I think, you know, hopefully we're, we're growing as a football team and we're getting better and um, certainly can't do put yourself in a situation like that against one of the premier teams in this league. I mean, Detroit's, they're, they're excellent in every phase, offense, defense, special teams, um, and they do a good job uh, just – creating explosive plays. Obviously, they can put points up in a hurry, yeah, as evident in that comeback against Chicago. And, and then on defense, uh, defensively, they're very disruptive. They cause you a lot of problems. They, their play style jumps off the tape. Uh, they play with reckless abandon and uh, do a great job of just putting a lot of pressure on an offense. Now, what's the uh, process and the plan for Darnell Savage this week? And is it too much to ask for him to be ready to play by third? Well, we'll see where he's at. Uh, he's been he's been working out, and um, you know I know he's he's itching to get back out there. This has been this has been killing him. So, uh, we'll, but we'll see where he's at. Gibbs has taken a lot more of a featured role for them since the last time y'all faced the Lions. Just what sticks out looking at him on tape and what he's done the last few weeks. He's so dynamic. Uh, not only as a runner, but he can run routes and catch the ball out of the backfield. That's one of the things that you loved about him when he was coming out in the draft. Um, Got to be honest, when, when he got picked in Detroit, I was might have had a few choice words, was not happy about that. I just think he's a dynamic player. I, I got a lot of respect for, for the player and his explosive playmaking ability. Down conversion attempts are up league wide, but Dan seems like one of the guys who will go for it more than any other head coach. He exhibited the last game of the year, your last year, but also the end of the Chargers game this year. When you know you're going against a team whose coach is that aggressive, does that change anything you do? Change anything you prepare your defense for? Yeah, you just got to be ready for that in all situations, no matter where they're at on the field. So, um, certainly, uh, you know, as soon as they cross, it really. Anywhere on the field, like I just said, I said you get you got to be ready to defend four downs and then have a fourth down call on the tip of your tongue, so that as soon as third downs uh, ended, if it's a manageable situation, know that you got to spit out a call and, and get it to your defense. Man, what, ha what happened with uh, with Jaden? I assume he didn't injure his chest during a walkthrough, so was this something that came up from the game? And yeah, just something that, like I think I mentioned even my post game presser. You know, he was just he was battling through, and it, it was something that he didn't feel like it was a real problem. But then he came in today and felt like it was a problem. I know both teams are different since week four, but how's your offense gotten to from where it was that night to where it's now? I mean, it's like night and day. 
different set teams? No, uh, I don't know. You just you grow and you learn and you know, I think we've done a lot better job of putting ourselves in manageable situations, staying ahead of the sticks, not getting in those get back on track situations. I think just going back and watching our tape, the first going around versus Detroit, I want to say we were third and 11 plus like five or six times. So it's when, when you're in those situations versus a really good team, a really good defense, I mean, it's hard to move the sticks and it's, it's hard to get into a flow of your offense, I think. You know, a lot of times early on in the season, I mean, we were in two-minute mode in the second half of, of too many games. And so the more that we can keep it close and, and can function within the normal, uh, our, our normal offense, the better rhythm you get. And you just it, it definitely, it's, it's what you practice all week. And when we get out of sync, out of rhythm, and you're in two-minute mode, it's just, you know, it's kind of a free-for-all. So is, is, all, is that just as simple as a bunch of young guys have had five additional games to grow? Is there something beyond that? Yeah, I think there's, I think there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I think I would like to think that we've done a better job, you know, preparing our guys um, and hopefully putting them in better positions. And then it's about executing and going out there and executing the plan. Uh, I, I mentioned a, w a while back, we made some minor tweaks to our process. I think that's been beneficial for us. And we got to continue to grind, though, because, I mean, you're only as good as your last game, and we got a great opponent, and, and, you know, going on the road. It's going to be a great challenge for us. If I'm not a guy, it, it works so that there's a certain play that, that changes the course. You look at Christian last year against Dallas, there mm -hmm. kind of changes on a play. The, but you look back, is, is there a, a, a time, a moment, a play for, for this offense that, that changed the course and kind of sparked that growth as a whole? Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to say. Um, not, nothing really jumps and comes to mind. I just think it's just been part of the process. Hey, Matt, if I'm not mistaken, I thought Musgrave finished the game, um, but he's on there with an abdomen. Is there what, What's going on with him? Yeah, he's got a pretty significant injury, so... Um, you know, I think it just speaks to the, his toughness because he did. Wow, that was interesting. Was that Taylor Swift? Okay, good, good one, Wildy. All right. Uh, yeah, where were we? Yeah, um, he didn't say anything all game, and then um, you know, he something came up, and he. He called Flea, and uh, you know he's been in the hospital, so um, it's been pretty significant. It just this kid is as tough as they come, and I think that was pretty evident when coming out of that Denver game when he hurt his ankle, and I mean he was battling to get back in that game and wasn't happy when they weren't letting him back in. So um, you know he's a guy that obviously he's I, I think he's going to be a very dynamic player in time in this league and he continues to get better every time he get goes out there so obviously a significant blow for us offensively but just like we always talk about you know it's going to be opportunities for for these other guys for Tucker for Ben uh, to to really show what they can do and I was extremely happy with I think Tucker you, you've seen the growth in him and uh, making a huge play on, on a simple flat route, just showing his athleticism and his speed. But I think a lot of things that you guys don't always see, just how much growth he's had in the run game as well as a blocker has been, has been evident. So uh, certainly going to be more on his plate in this game. Is that the point that it might be an IR type thing from us? We'll see. We're kind of working through everything right now. Do they, Matt, do they have a good idea of what it is? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if I've forfeited my right to ask questions now. But <laughs> I think you have. Uh, he's out of the hospital now. To my knowledge, yes. I yeah, haven't. I mean, we've been going through meetings all day, but yes. Um, but yes, certainly it was a you know scary situation. Uh, his situation notwithstanding, if you look at all five of your young receivers caught at least one ball on Sunday. Malik had a nice block, too. We know the other plays those guys made. You just talked about Tucker. How much 
different is it? You, I don't. I've lost count of how many times you said it takes all ten around Jordan. It's not just Jordan. How different do you think your offense is based on what all those guys are now doing, as opposed to the kind of challenges they felt early? Yeah, I, I just think with anything, the more reps they get, the more confidence. The more, the more their confidence grows and their ability to go out there and execute and play fast and, and react to certain situations or whatever the defense presents to them. Um, and certainly it, it definitely helps our quarterback. And I think he's been playing better as well. And I think he's shown great poise and uh, you can just see it in, in his decisiveness out there. There's, there's less hesitation. Is it, is it perfect? No, but it's, it's getting better and better and better. And that gives us a lot of confidence, I think, is not only for offensively, but as an entire football team. I know you don't make excuses, but do you think you and Steno and the rest of your offensive staff have figured out a little bit better now what the strengths of these guys are and how to, what to hold back and what to put in the game plan? Because that couldn't have been easy early on. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, you, you kind of, I think a natural evolution happens every year within most teams. Um, and you, you kind of feel that out. And certainly the more time that you have with people, the better understanding you have of, of what they do really well and what are the things that you need to emphasize and, um, you know, work on. So I do think we have a better feel for that and, you know, it's just it's just part of the process. Now, watching the tape back. The, the Detroit has struggled since 2008. They've only had a record of 500 or above five times. How did they get to where they are today at the top of your division? What's the number one reason? Yeah, I think, uh, you, I mean, first of all, you got to start at the top. And just in terms of, I think, the mentality that Dan's brought there, I think he's done a hell of a job and um, got a lot of respect for him. What, what he's been able to accomplish. But they've had a lot of good players, quite frankly. And um, they've got playmakers on the perimeter. I think you look at their offensive line, you could argue it's the, the best offensive line in, in the professional football right now. I think Jared Goff is playing at an extremely high level. They've got multiple backs that can make you pay. And then defensively, just I think Aaron Glenn's done a hell of a job. Um, you know, it was a process for them. I think you look back a year ago, and um, actually, I think what got them on track is when they when they beat us at, at their place, um, and they've been on fire ever since. But they've got they've added a lot of great players, and um, their play style, like I like I mentioned before, it just jumps off the tape. They play extremely physical. They play extremely fast, um, and so you got to. It's not just one guy, it's all 11, and they fly around, and um, you got to match that. Now, looking back on, on the game, how'd you 